Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Kainat, are you there? Yes, Koil. Yes, dear. You can proceed with your introductory speech. Yeah, uh, is my video available, visible? Yes. Okay. A very delicious evening, everyone. I cordially welcome you to the third public lecture organized by Cultural Studies Research Forum in 2023. Firstly, I would like to give a brief about our Cultural Studies Research Forum. It is a nonprofit enterprise started by the students of Wallace Tess to organize free public lectures courses and discussions in various aspects of research and cultural studies. It was inaugurated on 13th April, 2021, and we invite all of you to take initiative to organize our lectures and connect us with researchers, professors, and scholars from across India in order to keep this program running successfully. This is our forum, and each and every one of us has the opportunity here to initiate meaningful discussions and deliberations. Do continue supporting us and helping us build this forum. Now, let me take the opportunity to introduce our respected speaker, Dr. GGJ Alex, for a talk on food and cultural studies, research perspectives and approaches. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Dr. Alex teaches in the Department of Humanities at the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Valyamala Tirunvananthapuram. Her areas of interest include food and cultural studies and science fiction. She loves teaching and actively engages in culinary research from the perspective of cultural studies. She posts her articles on the blog curriesandstories.com. She is also the associate editor of an in-house biannual journal, Surbhi, Journal of Arts and Literature, published by the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. She is currently conducting a study investigating the culinary manifestations in the 20th century Malayalam literature from the perspective of cultural studies. With that being said, let us call upon Dr. GGJ Alex to enlighten us with her flavorful knowledge. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Kainat. Before I begin, I would like to place on record my sincere thanks to Dr. Kalyani, who is my senior at the Institute of English and definitely a motivator and an inspirer. So thank you, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity and all the research scholars. This is actually, uh, it's not, uh, you know, an expert talk, but I would like to share some of my thoughts regarding food and cultural studies. So before I begin, I would like to talk something about a book that I got from uh, one of our professors. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, recently, we have a uh, visiting faculty uh, from the US. So when she came to the campus, she gave this book to me, The Cooking Gene by Michael W. Twitty. Although I have heard about this particular book and read the review, I haven't bought that book. So I was so happy when I got this book. It is not just a book, it's a blend of so many genres. It actually speaks about the uh, South, uh, American um, South culinary history. It speaks about the stories of slavery, especially uh, Twitty's great, great grandparents and the, the beauty of the cuisines. Uh, it also speaks about the recipes. Most of the chapters concludes with a recipe and we have even photographs in this particular book. So it's a blend of so many genres. So I was so, so happy when I got this particular book. And um, during our uh, conversations, I mean, we were, you know, when we were not discussing the, the syllabus or the curriculum, uh, we love to talk a lot about food, cuisines, and uh, the, the various transformations that we could find uh, uh, you know, in cuisines. 
So uh, once I invited her to our home, and uh, uh, at that time, she uh, brought two packets uh, with her. And one was this particular packet. It is uh, it, it's something like a, a spice mix. Usually when we uh, prepare uh, fish fry, uh, especially uh, deep fry, uh, to prepare fish deep fry, you, we used to apply a, a, you know, a spice coating over the fish. Like uh, it's, it's, it's made up of, uh, uh, you know, uh, red chili powder, asphotida, salt, or uh, then again, black pepper, uh, turmeric, ginger garlic paste. So like that, we used to prepare uh, this particular masala for frying fish. And this uh, mix, kajun seafood uh, fry mix, uh, in this particular book, The Cooking Gene, there is a description of uh, this spice mix as well. And uh, um, she told me, Jiti, we will apply a little bit of uh, kajun over the fish. Uh, with the uh, with powdered pecans. So while I was taking uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, fish fry, fish shallow fan, pan fry. So she was actually speaking about the history of kajun. So I was wondering what exactly kajun is. So it is actually, it, uh, you know, uh, uh, today it's form a small um, uh, self-contained communities. Uh, within the US. So uh, it was a French colony uh, of Acadia. And then uh, um, they're actually descendants of uh, Roman Catholic French Canadians. Uh, so I was just wondering how the entire history of a nation is actually uh, condensed in the form of a spice mix. And, uh, you know, when she was telling about, uh, you know, the, the, the culinary history and especially about the Creoles uh, and those people who are living in the South, uh, the beauty of their cuisines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was just thinking how one um, you know, carries with him the ender history or the ender past through the culinary or the cuisines. And she also gifted me one more thing, and that is the uh, hush puppy seasoned cornmeal mix. And uh, it, uh, and uh, we, we can add onions and egg and uh, uh, a little bit of water and we can roll and fry it. So I was actually wondering at the particular statement that we could find Louisiana fish fry products bring the taste of Louisiana home. So the in, interesting thing regarding, again, uh, this particular uh, cuisine is I started browsing what is the Louisiana cuisine or the Louisiana Creole cuisine. Uh, there we could find, uh, uh, you know, the cuisine of the Southern United States. So I was so thankful to this uh, particular uh, visiting uh, faculty, this particular professor, who actually gave me a chance to uh, look at one's cuisine and how uh, you know certain uh, semiotics associated with uh, the, the the spices or the masalas that we use for our uh, uh, you know for making our curries and all how it carries with it not just to the taste or the flavor or the aroma it actually carries uh, you know one's history or one's past with it. And this is actually uh, the connection that I would like to make when I look at food from the perspective of cultural studies. Our, and it's not just past alone, but our, our, our present as well. Our entire life itself could be connected to the food. I'll show you one more um, you know, image. This is, uh, so uh, when she was here, I thought of, I thought like, you know, she'll be missing her home. Uh, so I prepared some brownies and cakes and she was telling me, no, Gigi, I don't want to taste, uh, you know, brownies or uh, cakes. What I love to eat here is uh, um, mutton biryani. So, uh, okay, so we were cooking it together. So when I, uh, I was just explaining in a very grand manner that this is how we have to uh, set the biryani for making dumb biryani. She was telling me, uh, 
uh, it's nothing but rice lasagne so uh, lasagne is being something very common uh, where we could find again layers she was actually uh, you know trying to translate uh, this idea of layering that we could find when we when we prepare food into uh, you know how we layer rice and uh, you know mutton kurma or uh, chicken kurma uh, for preparing biryani so certain techniques and she was looking more at the the the, the technique uh, or the techniques uh, that are involved uh, you know in the food making or the culinary process so this is why i would like to proceed with my talk uh, you know from uh, by highlighting the fact that food is everywhere this is something uh, that permeates our everyday life uh, so uh, you know when you look at this or when we highlight this uh, everywhereness uh, we have to link food with culture because to put it in raymond williams uh, uh, terms culture is the ordinary so that is how if we consider culture as the ordinary we could or uh, you know there isn't any type anything like an escape for food food is always with the culture so uh, you know from that point of view we have we, we can look at or we can connect uh, you know in a very convincing manner how food or how the culinary is always uh, linked with one's culture is all or always linked to the culture so when you look at this aspect of popular culture it's it's the people uh, uh, and again um, when you look at this concept of uh, the, the the popular uh, we have to consider the mass again we could categorize the, uh, the you know when you look at the society the way in which uh, you know um, you know we prefer certain food the way in which we are not happy with certain types of food uh, the way in which we have to uh, or we have to uh, you know adjust our uh, culinary expectations um, with the system all those things are related with the the the, the popular uh, you know this particular aspect of the popular of the culture again it deals with social relationships and uh, uh, social positions uh, for instance uh, you know there is this uh, movie uh, from kerala salt and pepper quite often when you look at the food depictions uh, in malayalam uh, films people uh, used to suggest this movie but there are other movies as well this being a very popular movie people used to look at how uh, food is considered as an agency or as a tool to connect uh, uh, you know uh, the hero and the heroine in that particular movie but you know when we begin the movie we could see that uh, uh, the central character the hero um, you know he uh, appreciates um, uh, food to such an extent that he even uh, take with him uh, uh, that particular person who could cook uh, you know exceptionally brilliant cuisines so that is why uh, we could find uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a tribal head uh, you know who um, who was taken away by the central character though the movie speaks about the uh, relationship between the hero and the heroine and how the uh, food as an agency connects uh, uh, these two people even when the movie concludes it, it doesn't speak much about the the role of this tribal character and these are some of the uh, you know points where we could pose a question about what exactly is the role of that person in that movie and recently um, that particular movie you know there is a hindi version uh, tatka um, which is actually uh, we can say that a remake of this particular movie again there also it speaks about these two the hero and the heroine again food uh, uh, you know plays a major role in connecting these two characters but it speaks about the, the 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 role or the relevance of communication especially when we um, look at relationship uh, to what extent you can communicate uh, with the other person or when you look at a uh, you know 
um, uh, society, to what extent we can communicate freely. And uh, uh, that particular movie, Takka, actually hints at the element or the role of communication. Another interesting fact, so this is just an example where food could represent uh, the, the, the varying relationships uh, between, again, when you, when you look at the, uh, uh, this particular aspect of food and cultural uh, studies, uh, it is always connected to so many other uh, disciplines. And it is actually this interdisciplinarity of the runner that gives more popularity. For example, we have to connect it with, the, uh, with certain aspects of ethnography, with certain aspects of sociology, uh, with certain aspects of semiotics, again, with certain uh, aspects of, uh, you know, when, you know if, you are, if you are looking at how the, uh, especially in the visual spaces, how food is depicted, we have to look at it from a different perspective. So it is actually this interdisciplinarity uh, uh, which uh, makes it more uh, permeable. So that is another uh, interesting factor that we could find when you look at the association or uh, when you look at food studies. Food studies, you know, it could be, uh, um, you know, it could be approached from uh, multiple perspectives. But when you look at food and the cultural studies, culture being, uh, 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 you know, and that is why we could say that when you look at food or, uh, or an item of food, it's a tangible product. But when you look at uh, how it is related to the culture, we could see that it gradually transforms to an intangible product. It speaks about so many things because, uh, 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 you know, uh, when you look at food, you know, it satisfies one's uh, hunger, it satisfies one's memories, it satisfies one's emotions. So the value or the meaning that we associate with a tangible product could be measured on the basis of, uh, uh, you know, these emotions that we experience. It could be satisfaction, it could be pain, it could be trauma, so many things are there. So the gradual transformation of a tangible product to an intangible product could be observed when you look at food from the perspective of uh, uh, cultural studies. Again, it's a, yeah, yeah, we could say that food is a bundle of meanings, especially when you look at the, the, the semiotics. Uh, for example, uh, when you look at the, you know, the, 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 the changing, um, uh, uh, you know, purchase style, people who, were, who always loved white bread or milk bread, they started purchasing brown bread. So that itself, that, uh, you know, that idea of buying brown bread uh, it signifies the, uh, to some extent, uh, the, the, the health consciousness or how, how uh, some sort of a refined taste. This refinement in taste uh, could be observed there. So uh, uh, again, when you look at uh, you know, food and culture, uh, you know, it speaks about the, the, the meanings that we could associate with the food. It speaks about how it connects people uh, it again speaks about, uh, you know, how the gradually it transforms from a tangible to an intangible agent or a tool. So th that, is how, that is why when we look at food studies or food from the perspective of, uh, uh, of culture, you know, we could relate that because every, you know, it need not be the food that we eat. It could be the memory related to the food. It could be uh, our longing, uh, you know, uh, for taking, uh, uh, you know, a, a particular kind of food. It could be those people who are associated with food. Uh, it could be anything. Recently, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll suggest one example. Recently, uh, you know, when uh, some of my friends, when they were discussing about uh, celebrating a Women's Day, what are the programs that we could organize? So somebody suggested, why can't we have, why can't we request our friends to uh, um, you know, conduct the food fest? So this connection between celebrating Women's Day and uh, food fest, uh, you know, through different food stalls, uh, is one of our friends asked the question, why in connection with uh, Women's Day, why, do you, why, why is it, 
uh, something like a mandate that you have to open a food stall where a, a lady can cook something and bring something. Uh, you know, you are actually you know, going back to the same statement that women is supposed to cook and all. So this is how the 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 you know the meanings associated with cooking, meanings associated with the performance of cooking, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 could be related to our culture. So uh, I would like to uh, share some of the perspectives uh, um, that we could discuss based on text. For example, uh, uh, literature. You know, when we read uh, novels or stories, or you know, you know the the how the the the, the print uh, medium, how it speaks about. You know, it's not it not it is not in the textual analysis, but the way in which culinary is depicted. Uh, it could represent, uh, you know, the how the gender manifests. It could represent uh, how power operates. Uh, all those things could be uh, observed when you look at, uh, you know, uh, literary representations of uh, um, or cuisine, of cuisines. Uh, for example, when uh, uh, one reads uh, the short story, Pandi uh, Bhojanam, uh, or the short story Biryani, you know, we could see how caste or how, uh, uh, you know, for example, in the case of Pandi Bhojanam, um, where it's you know that title itself from uh, from a reformative uh, 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 historical act that once took place in the history of uh, Kerala. So uh, when Sandosh Chikanam took that particular title for his short story, where a group of lawyers are involved. So lawyers being uh, you know uh, a representative agency of those people who could guard law or who could take care of the, 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 the common man, who could speak for their rights and their demands. You know, we could find a situation where uh, caste operates in such a manner that there also people, uh, even after uh, that many years, uh, you know, after the Pandifojanam uh, had happened, we could find a new set of uh, uh, people lawyers who are again lawyers who belong to different castes and religions and they're also the, gen, the 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 caste hierarchy operates in a very subtle manner and again they're going back okay so that that could that uh, such stories uh, could be there so we could consider food as a uh, uh, you know as an agency so there we could find uh, some of the uh, you know characters who uh, um, you know who take food from uh, you know people belonging to a lower caste and they are doing that in a very happy way uh, just to show up that they really enjoy uh, you know uh, they really enjoy the 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 the, the feast uh, but after some time towards the end of the story we could see that how she vomits the end of food uh, that she has taken uh, because she cannot understand the fact that, that she took food from a person who is uh, belonging to another caste. So that is how, and uh, uh, this is how food operates, or uh, the caste operates through food in uh, uh, in, in in some of the um, you know literary works that we could find. Again, when you look at the uh, the depiction of food, it's not just in literature. Uh, you know. If you consider cookbooks, that also shows, uh, you know, the food depictions in cookbooks uh, that show how, uh, um, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, when you look at the, the, the hierarchy, um, you know, we, we consider certain dishes as elite and certain dishes as not. Uh, for example, if you go to our libraries in, here in uh, our a university library or our state central library, there is a particular uh, section for uh, culinary art. Uh, we could find uh, cookbooks uh, with different titles. Uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, uh, Nambudri uh, uh, cuisines, Brahmin cuisines, uh, Nair cuisines, 
like that again cuisines related to places for example talasheri cuisine malabar cuisine uh, uh, so uh, so many uh, you know categories are there where region sometimes religion sometimes and places are also categorized um, based on the cuisines uh, we could observe uh, or we could find in such places but one lacune that we could find when you look at the uh, the uh, culinary art section in our library is we couldn't find that much book on tribal cuisines uh, uh, especially which uh, look at the those cuisines which were there once at one point of time amongst the uh, the tribal people so this uh, uh, this lack of uh, documentation especially in the case of uh, uh, cuisines of the the tribal people uh, is something is is something like a, a real gap that we could find in the uh, in their culinary history of a place or of a nation uh, uh, again if we go to uh, uh, i'll come to that uh, that is so that is the gastronomic narratives the cookbooks again the recipes uh you know and how these recipes actually uh, uh you know give us a hint regarding the culinary history of a uh, uh, of a nation and that is the significance of uh, works by uh, ijaz ahmed again uh, and uh, arjuna padure you know uh, who has discussed at length about uh, uh, you know constructing a national cuisine uh, you know when um, when a culinary expert from north uh, you know uh, writes a book on indian cuisine there could be an issue to what extent that expert uh, uh, you know uh, you know could be successful in documenting the entire complexities diversities uh, in, involved in the uh, you know when, when you look at the umbrella term indian cuisine what are the things that we could include what are the things that we uh, forget to include so that is another issue that we could find when you look at the gastronomic narratives again uh, uh, when you look at the audio visual agencies you know you know when we listen to the recipes a, 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 for example in the case of uh, fm radio there are certain uh, programs where they will uh, you know um, uh, air certain certain programs on uh, instant snacks or instant cuisines that we could, or uh, uh, you know cuisines from the scratch so such programs are there where it speaks about again um, you know certain programs where they speak about uh, healthy cuisines so when you look at the uh, you know the the, the contemporary uh, life of an individual to what extent such instant messages could uh, actually help uh, the, the the people and another uh, interesting factor is uh, how the pandemic uh you know molded or remolded the, the 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 culinary expectation of a nation this we could find when you you know you know if you could watch the uh, instagram post or the, the the youtube videos uh you know or again the the videos that we could find in facebook where it speaks uh, about you know in in that particular context especially in the indian scenario we could find it it is actually crossing the the the, the gender binaries where more people are involved again people belonging to different age groups are actively involved in the culinary spaces um as, and again in the digital media there also what you can uh, uh, so what is available for for you uh, for your visual pleasure uh this uh, the uh, the the culinary scopophilia especially when you look at uh, the food presentations um, um the plating uh, all those things are again interesting recently uh, some of the uh, movies like uh, uh, the menu then fresh these are some of the movies that uh, you know i could remember where uh, you know where food is presented in a in a in a, in a different fashion 
food means something that we consume this this is not something that we prepare from uh, you know from the nature this could be one's body as well so a new style of cannibalistic kind of consumption uh, you know is discussed in uh, you know in, in many of the movies as well so that is another point that we could or another important uh, you know uh, area that we could discuss next is the uh, you know the, the how food uh, you know through the medium of culture how we could connect that with the the the, the social spaces especially uh, the dining spaces and uh, what exactly is the changing or the transforming uh, manifestation of the dining spaces that we could find uh, in our culture uh, uh, for example uh, the, the the disappearance of uh, tea shops uh, or um, um, uh, coffee shops and it is actually giving way to uh, uh, you know um, something else and again the the uh, another interesting factor is the popularity of uh, uh, you know street vendors uh, especially uh, in the context of kerala the increasing number of tattugada again when you look at the gastronomic narratives there is even a book uh, which is titled as tattugada uh, recipes so that is another uh, uh, again that discusses um, the 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 uh, the dining spaces the public dining and when we go to the when we go into the uh, you know uh, the, the personal uh, or the private spaces also again we could find a changing uh, 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 you know attitude uh, uh, towards the uh, towards this particular space the kitchen space for example when you look at a, 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 a conventional style of house we could always look at kitchen at the extreme end of the home kitchen uh, takes the rear end of the home so and again women who are supposed to work in that space so it will take some time for uh, one to enter the house then in the front room or in the uh, sit out quite often the the uh, you know the male head of the family will be there so uh, th those things that the uh, that the man of the house has to take care of and those things that the woman of the house has to or the lady of the house uh, has to take care of there is a disparity or there is a gap between these two spaces and women's space was supposed to be there in that extreme end that are you know we are very familiar with the um, uh, uh, movies like uh, great indian kitchen and all where it speaks about uh, the kitchen uh, the kitchen space and how uh, it actually uh, becomes something like a prison uh, you know for the woman but when you look at the the the, the change in the architecture especially when you look at the uh, 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 the apartment style and all or in flats and all where we could find open kitchen this kitchen has the kitchen space has gradually moved from the rear end towards the the front end so that is another transformation that happened in the uh, you know architectural spaces uh, you know uh, of places like home so uh, again this we this is another uh, you know uh, another message and again this change in the social space or in the private space uh, uh, you know where food operates um, um, and that also uh, you know plays a uh, a, a key role because that is also related we could discuss that thing you know uh, only in consultation with the culture of that space and also the people who are performing in that particular space again it is related to when you look at the food studies from the perspective of uh, anthropology we uh, to what extent our, our culinary has transformed for example the way uh, you know uh, the 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 history of uh, mcdonaldization the history of fast food that is on one side and on the other end we could find how the ethnic cuisines you know to some extent we could find the popularity of ethnic cuisines and this popularity uh, uh, you know we can say that it is not exclusively based on the uh, on the health benefits but also an element of consumer culture is also involved when we sell some product as organic 
this uh, fad that is attached to the organic or the homegrown uh, products. It's not the rather than the 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 the, the health concern or rather than the culinary value that we could uh, associate with that more than that it speaks about the the consumer culture where we could market uh, you know each and everything uh, recently i noticed a particular board uh, that i uh, found in one of the organic shops here in the tiruvannadurai city actually in that particular shop we could buy vegetables different you know almost all varieties of vegetables are there but the, it is slightly overpriced so uh, uh, you know we cannot compare that price with an ordinary shop or a margin free shop so recently i noticed a particular board there where it says that don't compare the prices of uh, uh, vegetables that we have in this shop with the other shop because this products that we farm and we took ultimate uh, you know care to hand it as fresh as we can to you and that is why we are you know that you know, that we have to read and they are overpriced because the because of the care that they invest and they are uh, you know farm fresh and that is why uh, you know we have to pay more so how they market again uh, 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 that is also part of the uh, the growing uh, you know Uh, change that we could find in the contemporary economy how they market the the organic the, the that itself is a brand value for them and again when you look at the uh, the changing uh, culinary patterns we could find uh, the, the 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 influence of sociology especially when you uh, you know uh, you know uh, when you move out to the uh, restaurants or the culinary spaces uh, the way in which we dine out you know, uh, 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 you know when you look at youngsters um, you know what what they prefer to have and how often they are uh, you know visiting these hangouts and uh, uh, you know when they use this uh, uh, for example there are so many spaces in our city where it is not just a culinary space where it gradually becomes a a writer space or a hub where uh, people uh, you know who are in a community they could come and discuss things they could perform um, you know we are all very familiar with so many movies and uh, you know uh, 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 where such uh, you know such theme based restaurants are there again that that you know that depicts the uh, the 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 change in the demands of the the customers again the um, uh, how art is uh, related to that the uh, the kochi binale uh, you know uh, has now dedicated a particular uh, you know uh, you know uh, section to popularize the uh, the kerala cuisines and again I, 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 uh, there is an interesting point that we could find there when you look at the kerala cuisines what they are branding as kerala cuisines again that is to some extent that is associated to uh, certain places that is associated to uh, certain religion for example when you when you say suriyani duck curry it speaks about the christian religion it speaks about the duck so and that particular duck preparation is associated with that particular religion and that is how you market yourself so when you look at kerala cuisine it is not just duck curry alone so many things are there so uh, this type of uh, uh, changing uh, patterns in our uh, you know culinary expectations could be uh, you know Uh, looked at and that is what i meant by the uh, the critical perspectives that are text based now uh, you know when you look at how we can approach uh, I'll, i'll i'll suggest some of the uh, you know examples that i could find uh, you know where uh, you know how we how we treat uh, uh, you know these text Uh, let it be from a print medium or let it flip from a visual medium and what are the things that or what are the uh, areas that we could stress for example uh, you know whenever we look at culinary memories the first uh, you know example that we that quite often come to uh, uh, a person who uh, loves literature is remembrance of things past where the first bite of uh, madeline cake instigated the memories uh, so uh, like that you know when you look at food 
and when we study food from a cultural perspective memory studies play a, a, a major role uh, uh, david sutton uh, uh, and uh, so many others have looked at this um, uh, this link between memory and culture uh, when you look at food sometimes it speaks about the trauma and that is very much evident uh, you know if you could remember the story short story biryani by uh, sandosh echikanam it speaks about the trauma of a migrant laborer but when you look at the the culinary nostalgia that a person who is displaced from um, uh, his own place to another place uh, maybe for uh, uh, a better living condition uh, you know how uh, you know this happens in uh, in the short story by b murali which is titled as vaaya kumb there uh, the a particular character who stays in, uh, in the us um, he being a malayali he loves to or he earns to have a vaaya kumb thore so uh, and how he requests his uh, wife to prepare that and how it is actually and uh, his wife is not able to make that and how it uh, affects uh, you know that uh, you know his marriage that is the gist of the story but uh, uh, there is an interesting observation that we could find in that particular story for one full length page the author has dedicated to how to prepare vaaya kumb thore so uh, uh, so we could uh, see the, the the significance that is associated to a recipe so in the very beginning we may wonder whether this is a recipe or a short story uh, it speaks about how what are the things you have to take care of when you prepare vaaya kumb thor and how we ha- you have to peel the outer layers and how you have to nicely slice the vaaya kumb that banana blossom and what are the masalas or the spices that you have to add and how long you have to cook it all those things are very beautifully described just like a recipe and then gradually the order moves towards the 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 characters and then the plot and then we could find the climax and that is how the story is structured so again the the uh, the uh, you know the the prominent element in that story is uh, uh, no one else but vaaya kumb banana uh, blossom and uh, uh, and when you look at an expatriate's relationship with food and how uh, you know these people who are away from their homelands who are away, who are actually displaced how they think about uh, their own uh, place and how they uh, uh, you know uh, uh, connect themselves with their uh, homeland through the food is actually discussed by uh, anita mannur uh, in her culinary fictions so uh, you know so through memory so memories are active agents or uh, you know when you look at food from a cultural perspective when you deal with the idea of connecting one's history or connecting one's past with the contemporary or connecting one's uh, you know uh, a native place with the displaced place memories are active agents which link the individuals with the food through the food with the nation and another uh, interesting uh, or, you know factor that we could find when you look at uh, culinary narratives is how they use food uh, uh, as an agency to resist uh, uh, culinary resistance uh, we could find especially in food stratification uh two years back there came this short story by ash ashida um it is titled as indra gandhi not indira gandhi but indra gandhi so the uh, uh, the, the protagonist is named as uh, indira gandhi because of her hair style um uh, because of her curly hair uh, you know which looks very similar to indira gandhi's hair she as a representative of a dalit woman she uses certain uh, you know food stuff to fight against uh, certain people uh, you know who are there, who are there to molest her uh, so one such representation is how she makes use of crabs to attack uh, you know uh, 
uh, you know, uh, certain people who are there to attack. Uh, uh, so the, the crabs are, uh, again, uh, considered as tools uh, with which she resisted uh, those people. And again, uh, you know, when she prepares freshwater snail, um, uh, you know, I haven't come across, uh, you know, that much works where the preparation of freshwater snail is described. In this short story, uh, you know, how we could make a curry out of freshwater snail is prepared and as uh, also as a postscript of that story it is written as in um, northern malabar region we could say that uh, you know certain particular communities uh, uh, depended upon freshwater snails uh, so uh, uh, again we could consider this as an example of food stratification like what uh, uh, who will eat what that kind of, you know, if we ask that question, uh, uh, we could understand how the stratification appears in a society where certain types of food are considered as elite and certain, a certain as not. And again, uh, this changing patterns of food consumption, again, we could see that it speaks about uh, the, the, the tradition and how it is uh, gradually um, you know, shifting. And this shift is uh, recognized or approved as uh, something, uh, some sort of a demand by the modernity. For example, you know, at one point of time, we used uh, you know, jaggery instead of sugar. And now we are using sugar. And now, and again, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, for those people who are that much concerned about uh, 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 diabetes and all, or that much concerned about health, they won't be, they'll be using sugar free. So, uh, how a particular food uh, product or a particular cuisine, how it gradually, uh, you know, shifts from one particular position to another. That we could find. Again, uh, um, uh, you know, when you speak about kitchen, which is considered as a gendered space, and how the performance of a person could be observed. For example, um, um, there is this recent movie, Jai 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 Hai, where we could find the um, um, the hero's mother, uh, how she makes idiopam, string hoppers, and the struggle that, uh, you know, you know uh, she is taking to prepare idiopam. And that idiopam making process itself is a, uh, you know, um, the uh, is an effort, uh, uh, you know, that has been taken by women. So gradually, it, you know, at one point of time, it was her mother and later it becomes uh, her, his wife. So uh, mother, wife, again, sister, these three people who are uh, performing in that gendered space. And um, uh, when you look at the uh, uh, heroine, and uh, when they go out, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to dine out, what she demands and what she gets, there is a compromise that happens. And this food, the culinary compromises that, uh, you know, one is making. And uh, you know, through, uh, and again, we could say that in this particular movie, food to a great extent, um, different images of uh, culinary, uh, you know, uh, speaks about the character, speaks about the, 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 the empowerment of the character uh, to some extent. Then uh, again, when you look at uh, what you can eat, for example, if, if you're living in a condition where uh, there are certain bands, when you look at certain types of food, and, uh, you know, you, you know, you are supposed to have certain varieties only or certain types of food only. So we can say that the power that is operated over or upon us uh, by the state, uh, food could be uh, an agency um, through which the state could exercise uh, the food. Then what is edible and what is not edible? So again, the the you know the you know the, there is a time when an external agency dictates what you can eat and what you cannot eat. 
So these are all uh, some of the questions, um, you know, that uh, we could pose when you look at food from the perspective of cultural uh, studies. So, uh, you know, if we ask the question, why food studies, um, um, when you look at food and when we uh, approach food from the perspective of uh, culture, it will help us to uh, understand the semiotics uh, behind the, uh, you know, the, 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 the system of food and how it operates. Uh, you know, we could ultimately say that food itself, let it be the, uh, the, the, the food stuff that we consume, let it be the person who gives us the food, let it be the medium in which it is cooked, let it be the, uh, you know, the vessel in which, uh, you know, um, or, uh, in, in which we have prepared it. Uh, uh, everything concerning uh, our food, it has different layers of meanings or values associated with it. So to understand that, uh, uh, you know, when we connect that with the culture, uh, it is, it is uh, easier. Again, when you map one's culture, just like cultural mapping, uh, the culinary mapping is another agency that will help us to understand our society or critique our society in a, in a better fashion. And I, again, as I told, uh, when you look at especially the gender depictions or the gendered spaces, uh, quite often food could be considered as an agency uh, through which such micro resistances uh, you know, have happened. For example, when you look at the uh, novel Lady Scope by Anita Nair, there is, um, it speaks about um, a group of women and their stories. There is one story, uh, uh, Evangeline story, where uh, she actually fights uh, uh, her husband through the agency of the food. How she prepares, there was a point of time where she cannot, uh, you know, move ahead. So her retaliation is through preparing extremely delicious, extremely rich, extremely sweet cuisines, uh, you know, uh, to her husband. And that preparation, uh, or, uh, you know, she performs like a, uh, you know, perfect wife. So we could see that, you know, she is to on to the gender expectations and all, but there is another motive behind her action. She is actually resisting. She is actually fighting. And towards the end only, we could see that her, uh, you know, what her aim was. So uh, when you look at uh, food studies from that fashion, again, um, we could see the, the changing uh, patterns of food consumption. Uh, for instance, when there was a time where it depend upon a particular kind of a food, uh, let it be rice or wheat. And now when we gradually, uh, when we give way to something else or the introduction of fast food or the introduction of uh, soft drinks or when, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, why do we have that much of uh, 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 you know, junk food, especially when you look at youngsters. Again, depending upon the work style of uh, people, they uh, prefer to change the the, the patterns of uh, uh, you know food uh, consumption. Uh, so we can say that it is uh, this food uh, consumption patterns. Uh, it is connected to the culinary. It is connected to the uh, you know the lifestyle of individuals. Uh, so that will also be critiqued through culture because as we all know, culture is the ordinary. It's the every man's and it is everywhere. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude uh, and uh, it would be fine if you uh, ask your queries. I would uh, try to answer. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Kalyani for giving me this uh, opportunity and all my scholars who uh, listened. Uh, now I would like to uh, listen to your observations and feedback. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's really enlightening. And here we have a few questions. Uh, so first, uh, 
in YouTube, uh, Maitri has asked that, uh, ma'am, is culinary culinary related only to the serving process or the whole process? How is it different uh, from gastronomy? Uh, see, it's not uh, just the serving process alone. Culinary is related to the end there. For example, there are certain projects like uh, from farm to uh, fork or uh, from farm to the uh, you know, dining table. Uh, so when you look at the end air programs where, uh, you know, where we are farming, where we are harvesting and who are involved in the harvesting, again, the economy involved there, the, the, the production uh, work involved there, the consumption practices and their thing could be connected to the culinary. Thank you, ma'am. Again, uh, she is asking that the he hegemony of the state and edible of food. Can you tell me the references of books? I mean, she is asking some uh, books. Hegemony of the state and the? Edible of food. Edible, yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, give me some time, I'll, 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 I'll check. There are so many, so many books that has already uh, discussed about, just a second, I'll tell. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, till then, guys, if okay. anyone can say anything, I mean, can uh, want to ask anything to ma'am directly, they can unmute and ask ma'am. Yeah, in there two. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, there is this, uh, shall I? Yeah, yeah, ma'am, please. Okay. There is this book by um, Bo Bashley, Joanne Holos, and Steve Jones, where food, uh, uh, you know, um, food and cultural studies, there we could find the hegemony of the food and how, uh, you know, the nation uh, operates or the state operates. And again, uh, you know, there is this uh, uh, um, uh, article by William Alex McIntosh, where it speaks about the sociology of food. So uh, these are all uh, some of the references that I could suggest randomly. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Indu, you can unmute yourself and ask your query. Are you there, Indu? Uh, I think her connection has lost. Ma'am, there is uh, another question in chat box that uh, from Priya Darshani, uh -huh. any literary theory or theories that can be applied to the food studies in contemporary novels? Yeah, yeah, so many theories are there. For example, uh, you know, um, we could observe the everydayness, uh, you know, everydayness of uh, uh, food uh, um, that could be studied, uh, you know, uh, from Michael Descartes point of view of practice of everyday life. Then, uh, as I told, Raymond Williams culture is ordinary. Then Pierre Bourdieu's uh, critical works uh, titled as Distinctions, where he highlights about habitus or the taste. Uh, then um, uh, Sosu's theoretical frameworks. So many are there. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, even study contemporary novels. Yeah. Ma'am, even can we just relate food with uh, structuralism also? Correct. Exactly. The row and the cook, all those things. Yeah. Yeah. And one more question, ma'am. Uh, uh, Jora, say, Jora is saying that I am reading Kim Thuy and her work articulate refugee experience which can be seen as manifested using food as the late motive. Could you please suggest any theoretical paradigms which I could use to connect the two disciplines, food and refugee study? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is actually this uh, uh, work by Fabio Perasicoli. And... Uh, 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 there, uh, food cultural studies and popular culture, exactly. And again, um, 
food uh, yeah, then yeah uh, ken albala there are so many but these are all some some that i could uh, remember okay ma'am and indu is asking that the class system also in food studies for example yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. salt and saffron now yeah, yeah 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 there are oh no though all those disparities related to caste class religion creed everything we could find uh, you know if we could watch some of the uh, you know movies for example kakka mutte people belonging to different classes uh and how they look at uh, for example a new pizza shop uh, came to a particular area and how these two kids how they look at that uh, you know how they love to go there and they when ultimately when they reach there uh, what was their response so uh, yeah of course it's it's an interesting point thanks a lot ma'am uh anyone else want to ask anything hello ma'am good evening i'm ambika and it is so nice to hear you ma'am uh, ma'am could we uh, draw any um, uh, parallel between climate change with the uh, uh, food chain or food security yeah how um, may hello ma'am shall i shall i continue yes yes ma'am yes, yeah so you asked a question on can whether we can connect climate change and food climate change and the food chain yeah yeah uh, definitely uh, definitely yeah yeah where um, uh, what i presume is rather than from a culture studies perspective we could study that from a scientific perspective as well yes ma'am ecological perspective correct 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 Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, uh, thank you, ma'am. And ma'am, uh, I have a question that uh, food can have some symbolic meaning also, na? No? I mean, yeah. based on yeah. association with other meaningful experiences. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. So, will you please give some light along with some examples on? Yeah, it? yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, randomly, I, I'll, I'll give you one example. uh this is actually a poem by anitha tambi anitha tambi is a uh, uh, you know uh, writer from kerala uh, so um, during the pandemic i read this poem it is actually uh, structured into three uh, you know uh, three sections and the title is um, i'll translate it in english as uh, curry leaves uh, moringa moringa leaves curry leaves and uh, uh, plantain it speaks about these three uh, you know um, uh, 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 culinary representations so the curry leaf when it speaks about curry leaves and again in these three sections there is one poem uh, in the form of a verse about the uh, about the title the topic the curry leaves the moringa leaves and the plantain and then the next section will be a uh, what should i say uh, a recipe uh, based on that particular uh, you know cuisine and the uh, third section will be uh, something like an essence a summary how do you look at that so this is how she structured the end of her poem so in the first section when she speaks about moringa leaves she considers moringa as a mad woman so while i was going through that poem i was just wondering you know we could relate that with the mad woman in the attic uh, she says that moringa is a mad woman the laughter of moringa uh, 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 appears as moringa flowers and with moringa flowers we can make this particular dish and that is how it proceeds and uh, in these three sections she actually speaks about women um uh, you know their uh, their struggles and their fight their survival strategies but in a in a different uh, through a different connotation so uh, yeah of course thanks a lot ma'am it's really important for me and uh, shushanta sir you can ask your query
thank you. It was really uh, fine session. Uh, actually, not ask any questions. Uh, I'm just doing an observation. Uh, in my uh, during my study degrees, I have read one novel, novels, a long and uh, famous uh, word all in the Zenadi study of this long cousin. Uh, in this, there was a character turn uh, who left and uh, the grape uh, has so, some beautiful pieces. Uh, please, Mr. Sir, and uh... sorry, Coil, that was um, yes, yes. I was not um, able to hear it clearly. Uh, uh, Susan, you were not audible due to your network problem. You can I, just write the query on the chat box and then ma'am will answer. I think she left the uh, meeting. Okay, ma'am. Actually, there is problem. Ma'am, my, so, my connection was disconnected. Okay, okay, okay. Now it's clear. Can I'm, I just I'm, ask yeah. once more, please? Now, now I can hear you. Thank you. Oh my God, again it's... Actually, uh, Sushantada, can you listen to me? Please, uh, we couldn't yes, hear yes. you. Yeah, we cannot hear you because of your network issues. So please okay. type on the chat box. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay, someone else uh, wants to ask uh, something, please. Admute yourself and ask ma'am. At the rate seven. I don't know the ma name. Good evening, ma'am. Ah. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can hear. Ma'am, can you tell me what is the difference between culinary and gastronomy? Because in both the things are giving that uh, the uh, the both is the cooking style or the art of cooking. What is the basic difference between see, uh, culinary see. and gastronomy? Yeah, gastronomy is someone who is so passionate about cooking and all. When you look at culinary, it is more related to cultural. It is related to the entire uh, style of the entire style and their values and their meanings. But gastronomy is more technical. Someone who loves to cook, someone who loves to serve. That's all. Ma'am, can you can I say that it is a connoisseur? Yeah, food connoisseur. Correct, gastronomy. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, I think anyone else want to ask anything, then they can. Otherwise, um, we have to. Yeah, there that. is one question. Uh, could you please suggest some contemporary okay. Indian food fiction writers? Uh, uh, there is this uh, 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 Madhur Jaffrey. Madhur Jaffrey's. Uh, 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 autobiographical kind of novel, Climbing the Mango Trees, then Sara Suleri, then uh, uh, Mistress of Spices, um, then uh, uh, there is this uh, novel by Anita Nair, I forgot the title. Yeah, these are all some of the Indian uh, kind of. Ah, then again, uh, I forgot, Temsula Aos. Uh, uh, Tamsula Ao's autobiographical work is the Tamsula Ao from uh, Northeast. It's an interesting autobiography. Uh, the title is uh, Burnt Curry. Burnt Curry, uh, I think. Just a second, I'll tell you. Burnt Curry. Tamsula Ao's. Uh, um, uh, that particular book is uh, really interesting. It speaks about, um, uh, you know, um, uh, it actually speaks about her own uh, story, the struggles that, uh, uh, you know, um, she had to face and all those things. Uh, Ma'am, someone has written in the chat box. Okay. Once yeah, Burnt Curry. Ah, yeah, Burnt Curry and the Bloody Rats memoir. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. It actually, you know, it's 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 really motivating, and uh, 
it speaks about how we could relate or how we could connect our past and how we can move over move ahead it's so empowering that particular text thank you so much anushka uh, it's such a beautiful book yeah reef is again susan the noel suggests about reef correct thank you so much ma'am uh hello dear you can ask hello ma'am yeah yeah ma'am can i ask you one question uh, ma'am uh, what what do we mean by theoretical framework actually okay so uh, for example if you are looking at a particular uh, okay uh, um you know the story but you will be uh, studying that particular uh, uh, novel or the film based on a critical perspective for example if it speaks about you know uh, when you look at uh, uh, this particular movie uh, great indian kitchen how gender operates or how kitchen or the domestic spaces uh, you know uh, 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 look at women what exactly is the role depicted by the uh, these particular spaces so you know we have to take a particular position whether we have to read it from a feminist perspective if i am taking that that is my theoretical framework okay ma'am okay. thank you ma'am thank you ma'am okay and i think now it's the time to wrap it up so uh, i i am really glad that uh, i am going to give you the vote of thanks really so happy tasty yummy evening everyone it has been such a privilege to be a part of this imposing event as a representative of the cultural studies research forum i would be delighted to extend my whole hearted gratitude to our dignified guest dr g g j alex honestly a bunch of thanks to you ma'am for apprising us with your flavorful knowledge on this adequate field of food studies with a research perspective then that unwrap various concepts for learners like us it is such a pleasure to listen you throughout the session we would definitely look forward to gather more from you in the upcoming discourses we hope you would like it too and now i would love to thank all with all my sincerity to the patron of velat taste dr kalani velat who is behind our all enthusiasm and to my csrf team and also to our whole team test a wide round of applause and a thanks to all the participants who made the event a memorable one i would like to thank all of you to present here for making this time to be with us today and helping us make this event a grand success thank you one and all now it's time to uh, conclude today's session and have a delicious evening ahead ma'am uh, do you want to yeah. say yeah 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 thank, thank you, you coil thank you thank you so much coil thank you so much prijit uh thank you so much all my scholars uh, and uh, i would like to thanks once more uh, dr kalyani uh, for giving me this opportunity actually it helped me a lot uh, you know while i was preparing i was um, uh, my only concern was whether i'll be able to uh, you know uh, connect my uh, observations with you i uh, i'm not sure to what extent i was able to uh, answer your queries but for me it was really enlightening uh, and thank you so much for giving, in spite of the fact that today we are celebrating shivaratri or oh, you know you were there thank you so much wish you all shivaratri wishes wish you the same ma'am so guys see you and keep learning and never forget the motto of our valet this the best is yet to be thank you can i leave the meeting uh, yeah ma'am thank, thank you so much yes ma'am thank you thank you thank you ma'am
Brigitte, you can you. Yes, sir. 